Hi, this is a video on GIMP. I'm using 2.8. It's how to make very simple gears really easy and fairly quick using just a simple brush and polar coordinates. And you can get this type of affair in you know, a minute or two. Uh, okay, this is how it's done. So I have now an image which is 200 by 800 high. Okay, and some pixels. I have guidelines which are now set up at 40 and 20 from the edge and 40 and 20 from the edge. Okay, and 80 in the center, as well as another guideline in the middle. Okay, now, if you're unfamiliar with how to set grids up and stuff, this is how you do it. You go image, configure grids, okay, set them up at 20 by 20 with, I've got crosshairs, you can use dots if you want. Okay, and you're going to obviously view and show your grid and snap to the grid. Okay, lasso, free selection tool, whatever you want to call it, and then simply click to the dots. Okay, and this is the basic brush. Bucket fill tool, fill it with black. Now that it's selected, the easiest way to make brushes from this and not screw up your template is to simply do this. Edit, copy, and edit and paste as a new image. Thank you. Get up there. Okay, in 2.8 it's popped over here. It's kind of nice. Okay, to make this a colored brush, okay, you have to do a couple of things, and this works for anything, by the way. Uh, you want to make color one, it should be black. Two, you've got to go to image, mode, and change it to grayscale. After that, you'd go down to image and flatten your image. Okay, it takes out all the junk, collapses it to one layer. So I said if you've done it over here, you've lost all this. Okay, because you didn't know. Now, the way this works is pretty simple, actually. When you're scaling this brush, or any brush you actually make, the height's not so important other than it's going to open this up and you'll find that out. What is important is the width. So the width of the brush, which you scale, has got to be, well, it's got to be divisible into the layers you're going to use. I usually use like three, four, thousand, two thousand, okay? Square layers, by the way, for polar. Uh, so it's easily divisible if you scale your brush to 25 pixels wide or 50 pixels or 100 pixels, depending on the size of the layer you're going to use and the number of teeth you want. Okay, hopefully you've got that. So, this is how you would do this. You go image, and if I never find it here, okay, scale your image. We'll just bring it down here, unchain it. Pretty simple. 50, and we'll say 150. Okay, and scale it. That's it. There's your brush. I'm not going to go through this, but in 2.8 you go file and you export it. And you export it as a GBR brush to wherever you save your brushes. And uh, two things of note. Uh, the spacing here. Keep it at 100. Okay, I believe it comes by default at 10. Change it to 100. That's percentage. Okay, not pixels. And it's 100% of your brush. So when you stretch it across your canvas or layer or image, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's going to be no spaces, and it won't overlap, otherwise it will look funny. The other thing is, is I would name it, because the width of the brush is quite important, okay? That's the actual thing you need to know. Six months from now, you're looking around, what's this brush? I would name it with a 50, and then whatever you want to call it, because if you put Joe Blow up here, that's just what it's going to say. And when you use the brush, it's always going to show the largest size. Okay, so this is not going to do you much good. Okay, so you saved your brush, you got your brush, that's it. Done. While we're here, this is another option. Okay, same template. Change your grid spacing to 5 though, and that would be 25, and that would be 10, and you can change it however you want. You can round these off, you can do all kinds of things. Okay, uh, just remember that the more you squash it this way, the further it's going to get, and when you use polar, it's going to do different things. Okay, it's going to get worse sometimes. Okay. Okay, that was a simple one. We're going to just shoot, shut these guys off. I'm using a thousand by thousand canvas. Okay, I have a few different layers here. So first I'm going to show you this, and we're probably going to make two videos of this because it may get too long. Okay, so this is the brush you just made. Okay, brush, pencil tool, doesn't really matter. Make sure it's the right size. I'm going to go across the layer in three different places. Now, to get this to work, you have to catch the edge of the layer. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. You have to catch the edge of the layer with the brush. Okay, out here not going to work, and in here will not work. Well, outside might, but you only get lucky. So anywhere on the edge that the brush catches. Okay. 
and shift and control to keep it straight and I would suggest you do that otherwise it's going to look kind of dumb. I'll use three different colors here just so you can see what polar is going to do. Okay. Red. There we go. Leave a bit of space at the bottom. There you go. Simple as that. Doesn't look like much. Filters. Distortions in 2.8 polar coordinates. By default, I believe it comes mapped to the top. Okay. This will give you inside gears, but there's an easier way to do this. If you just change the angle to 180, it turns the brush upside down, and you can just use polar. Okay. So, as you've seen, it's now pushed whatever was at the bottom into the middle and turned it around. Okay. What's on the outside becomes. I'm just going to get that on there. Okay. What's on the outside is wider. As you come in closer, they change. Okay. Not much but rocket science there. One other thing this brush was 150 pixels high. These are now roughly 75. That's because it's squashed it down, saved it in the middle. Okay. If you want to get different size gears but the same size kind of tooth, this is how you do it. And hopefully, I've got the layers in the right place. Okay, so same brush. We'll go across here. You got to go across the top of the layer. So I've gone across the 400 layer. Okay. I'll take the 800 layer and just go back across in the same place. Yeah, roughly. I mean, you can scale it out a bit. Okay, filters. Repeat polar since I've already done it. And we'll go up here and filters and repeat polar. And just grab this guy and move the active layer. There you go. You can see pretty much what's happening. Okay. More teeth, less teeth, but reasonably the same size. Try it anywhere else and it doesn't work. Okay. So, you've got the basics now. Next time around, I'll show you how to do infills. So, stay, part, stay tuned for part two. Thanks. Bye.